Claire March, Managing Director of Council House, a former Labor advisor, and Graham Morris, political strategist, former Liberal advisor, and including uh, to John Howard, Graham, who always, and one of your uh, former colleagues texted me during the press club and said that you always ensured Mr Howard had a list of the key prices in terms of cost of living in his briefing folder and that remained a, a fixture for Mr Howard right throughout his time as Prime Minister. That's, uh, well, if Mr Morrison had it today, he clearly couldn't find it when asked about it by Andrew Clennell. Yeah, but, but fair go. Um, you know, he had figures like today we hit 50 million people vac vaccination injections unemployment under 4% probably, da, 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 all the big figures. You know, did, I, I, I'm not sure that Australia... It's, it's a cute question, but I'm not sure a lot of Australians expect the Prime Minister to be out there every day buying milk and bread. Um, look, I, I got it. It was cute. And you're right. Um, in the first debate in 96, when Mr Howard was debating Mr Keating, I rang one of our staffers during the day and I said, look... How much is a loaf of bread, pint of milk and a pound of sausages? And off she went and she came back with these answers and, it's, and my wife said, that seems high. And unfortunately, the staffer had gone to the most expensive um, grocer in Canberra and it was sort of double. But in the end, we just said to the PM, look, it doesn't matter. It's about $2 for milk, $2 for sausages and $2 for bread. Stay with that. But from then on, that's true. He always had a bit of an answer, but, you know, you know, was it a showstopper? No, was it a giggle? Yes. Claire, your thoughts on that? And I, I ask it in the context of this cost of living issue, which is, which is hurting. And I know there are lots of other things at play here in a time of a pandemic, but anyone that's gone to the Bowser over summer driving around knows... Mm. <laughs> It you know, knows it, uh, it hurts a bit more exactly. than normal when you fill up the tank. Yeah. Look, and it's it's great to be back with my my former sparring partner, Graham Morris. And is it just it just proves how you know the longevity of this question around what is the price of milk, how much is a roast lamb, and you know icing on birthday cakes and and whatnot. Um, but you know this is a serious issue for politicians to reckon with here. And as you point out rightly, Kieran, cost of living ranks as the first, if not the second, salient issue out there in the community that voters care about. And I think you know we we might think a question like like this is trivial in the context of a press club speech. It's not. It's the issue that Australians care uh, most about. And I think it's a, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a standing test for our politicians and will be for some time. I think, interestingly, the, the other question that the PM got today that he needed to reckon with was the invitation for him to apologise to the Australian public for, you know, what, what is a normal part of governing, let alone governing in a pandemic environment, which is getting not getting all things right all the time. So giving mm. the Prime Minister the opportunity to apologise for those things that he fell short on. And he squibbed the opportunity there. And I think, you know, if we think about these two questions, what do they mean? He's he's at the point now where he can fall foul of one of the the, the oldest and, 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 you know, most lasting truisms of politics, which is if you show that you are out of touch to the Australian public, whether it be that you don't have the requisite humility and demonstrate that you're just a, a regular person that um, cares deeply and, and shows a level of humility um, uh, when when the, those of uh, in the those voters turn their mind to, to casting their ballot. Uh, and if you don't know the, the issues that they care about most, like what is the price of milk, well, then a, there's, a, there's a sure result that follows, and that is essentially being voted out of office. So I think insofar as, like, gauging the Prime Minister's frame of mind today, I don't uh, know that it was a particularly strong day for him in the, the type of mental frame that he needs to be competitive well, on these uh, two important issues. It was a brutal um, question and answer session, I think, by anyone's uh, assessment at the, the press club, regardless of, of, of the speech. I think he did the right thing, Graeme, in terms of the contrition and, and saying, look, we got, we've got some things wrong and, and just trying to reset. But before we move on from the cost of living issue, I know for a fact that some of his senior colleagues, including the Treasurer, always walks around with a list of the key 
numbers in his hand. So I, I, I'm a little bit confused. Maybe he couldn't find it. I'm not sure what happened, but it's a bit awkward, isn't it, Graeme, when, when you've got this sort of cost of living burden for most Australians right now? Well, it, it look, look, it'd be awkward, but, you know, the idea that Scott is some, you know, tough who doesn't understand, you know, middle Australia is just plain silly. You know, I've been to the lodge and he's at a function, he's walking around in thongs and his shorts. You know, he's still an average sort of a bloke, but he doesn't fill up the car because he didn't drive. The security people and his driver drive does that. But look, look I thought I thought the speech itself, I thought he was resolute. I thought it was clear that he was trying in his own mind a few lines. Um, I, I, I get the sorry thing um, that Claire's talking about, but he did actually say that, look, everything may not have been perfect, but here we are and we're still standing strong. Oh, I think I think that's a very important message for the government to go right through to election time with. Um, and question time, I'm a firm, former, former journalist, and there were times there where I was ashamed of my former profession. Uh, two of the questions came straight off the Labor Party. About six of them were good common sense ones, and four or five of them were just juvenile. OK, that's a, a fair... Uh... Assessment from Graham Morris to his former colleagues here in the press gallery. But Claire, to you on the issue of Labor's approach here, I've spoken to several Labor people today, um, very cautious about the where the numbers are at in polling. Um, obviously buoyed by the polling, but are the events of 2019 scarred them? Oh, well, look, without a doubt, the 2019 election was was bruising. And, and I think not just those in the Labor Party, I think a lot of the commentariat, the media, and indeed some people on um, the coalition side, you know, it, it really made us not feel a bit uh, unsure about our political compass there. And, you know, to his credit, Scott Morrison and his... Uh, his uh, political play was, uh, you know, we underestimated clearly, without a doubt, and a lot of us in the collective. I think if we look at what Labor announced today and their green uh, hydrogen announcement is, you know, this is a really strong demonstration of how pragmatic uh, opposition leader Albanese and his team are going to be on energy. And if we compare that to what the Prime Minister announced today, which was, you know, w while I don't want to discredit the, the policy merits of the announcement, I actually think the what the Prime Minister announcement an, an announcement that he made today was very uh, good insofar as um, policy around uh, business investment and commercialisation. It's hardly a vote-winning uh, headline there. It's not to those issues that we were talking about earlier, cost of living, the kitchen table, those things that the Australian uh, Australians are, are driving yeah. their decision-making and their concerns as they enter this period. The, the Labor Party, on the other hand, are speaking directly to how to drive down energy costs, how to be pragmatic mm. about our energy mix, setting aside whether or not gas will be a transition, the debate around whether gas will be a transitional energy or not. And we're getting back to yeah. those uh, questions around, um, you know, what will our future economies look like? So if you're comparing, I guess, the, the where both parties land on on today. I'm not saying this is day one of the election campaign, but it certainly feels like we're getting more into an election climate here. Um, yeah. I think it's it's a really good tell on how the strength of where Labor's heads at, what their thematic um, uh, frame is, and how closely they're nestled in behind where Australians want to uh, hear from them on the issues that matter to Australians. Graham, I think the core question, I'm interested to hear what you think on this, uh, given your own experience in government and working with uh, Mr Howard. Um, when I've been just reflecting the last few days, the, the key challenge for Scott Morrison is to reset, get people to listen to him and as he tries to, uh, you know, re-establish his, his credentials for the job and the government's economic foundation and so on. But the risk is after you're heading into a fourth election, is the risk that the voters have stopped listening here, like they did with John Howard in 2007? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, but there's ways around that. And just, just a couple of things. One is, is we should have learned last time from, the, from polling that they can get it wrong. They always get the National Party wrong. And once you, because they can't poll in the bush, they haven't worked out how to do it. And also, once we get to an election campaign, the electorate sort of 
focuses and the, and polarizes and all of a sudden mr albanese goes from sort of oh yeah who's he through to oh do we actually want him as prime minister so it becomes more more polarized and he's got to deliver but look i i, I get what you're saying about whether the prime minister can always be the deliverer of the message so um, once you get to what a campaign sometimes but also you've got paid commercials you've got other ministers out there doing stuff yeah. um oh, it, look i do understand that that you cannot you cannot again do sort of oh yeah mr morris is is morrison is is interesting he's that daggy dad bloke he likes his footy and he's got a dog you know you can't do that twice no. but no. but he can do hey i'm the leader who's trying hard and the other bloke hasn't got a clue what he's doing